The official trailer for Despicable Me 4 is here, so let's talk about it. Now, the first thing that's shown is the fact that the minions are back. And this, I think, is a really important thing to highlight because at the end of Despicable Me 3, it seemed like all of the minions had left Gru behind. You see, the minions had gotten kind of tired being good with Gru. They had spent hundreds of years serving evil masters and they wanted that life to continue. They wanted more evil adventures, so they went with Gru's evil twin brother, Drew. Sorry, brother! Somebody's had to keep the family tradition alive! Right? He flew off into the darkness of the night sky, which made it seem like Gru was gonna be on his own. Our favorite bad guy seemed to no longer have his minions by his side, but there are clearly a few minions who are okay with being good. But the big question that I have is, did Gru and Lucy catch Drew at the end of Despicable Me 3? I think that would be a really interesting way to open up the movie, or at least something to discuss throughout the next story, because Drew is somewhere out there roaming the earth, and I would love to know what happened to him. I feel like this is especially important since Gru's family has continued to grow. Gru has become a true family man. Not only does he have his daughters, Margot, Edith, and Agnes, but he also has his wife, Lucy, and now we're getting to learn that they also had a new baby boy, Gru Jr. But unlike his little girls who were excited and ready to embrace a loving family structure, it appears that Gru Jr. is kind of apprehensive to love his father. He's specifically described as being intent on tormenting his dad. And I gotta be honest, I think that's really tragic for Gru. I mean, Gru grew up with this really complicated relationship with his mother. It was very hot and cold. He never was really embraced by other kids or was accepted for who he was or was encouraged or really just loved consistently. And he didn't even have a father growing up. He only really learned that his father was alive for most of his life after he had already died when he met his twin brother, Drew. You told me that dad died of disappointment when I was born. So the fact that Gru is there providing this stable-ish family structure. I mean, the fact that he is like, you know, a secret agent doesn't mean that he's always keeping everyone super safe all the time. Interacting with super villains obviously has a degree of danger to it, but otherwise, I mean, it's a loving home. He's providing a great environment, the one that he wanted as a child. I mean, Throughout the original three Despicable Me movies, Gru's house never changed, but now it's got pink accents, it's got a little castle outside, there's drawings and a basketball hoop on the garage door. I mean, everyone in the family even has their own cereal bowl. Agnes has a little unicorn bowl. I mean, Gru's mother took him to villain con as a child, but other than that, it was a really tumultuous relationship. So the fact that his son is now pushing him away, I think is really sad to watch. Why can't Gru just have some love in his life? But Gru's relationship with his son is not the only thing that's going on. He can't just focus on game night and almond milk and playing in the backyard. Instead, there is a new villain after him and he is introduced to us by Silas Ramsbottom. Now, Silas was the director of the Anti-Villain League. He was in charge when Gru was recruited to become an agent. But what's interesting is that Silas Ramsbottom retired in Despicable Me 3. He was replaced by Valerie Da Vinci. Blah, 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 I'm you love. understand, you're old, Ow. you're fat, you're done. Oh. No. Let me be. The woman who fired Gru and Lucy. You're fired! After failing to defeat Balthazar Brat over and over and over again, they were let go. And it was only once they captured him definitively that they got their jobs back. So I wonder why Ramsbottom is the person who's in charge with getting Gru and his entire family to safety. Of course, there's the possibility that he got his director role back, but I also think it's possible that he might just be helping out or maybe he 
just wants to get back in the game and maybe he's just a casual intern for the anti-villain league. Who knows? But regardless, Ramsbottom is the one to inform Gru and Lucy that Maxime Lamal and his girlfriend Valentina have escaped from prison and are hunting them down. Now we don't really know why he's out there to search for revenge, but we just know that he's going to try to enact it. Of course, Gru must have stopped a lot of villains at this point. He's been involved with the AVL for a long time now, but I do think it would be interesting to know that Lamal was involved with Gru in some very personal way. And I think there's a way to make that work if this new villain was related to Gru's childhood mentor. Now, at first, when I saw the new villain's long nose, of course I thought that he could potentially be related to Gru. Who knows, he could be a, a distant cousin to Gru and be a part of his evil family line, but I feel like we've already seen that with Drew. I just don't think that would be a very satisfying reveal. Whereas if he was related to someone like Dr. Nefario, that could be a lot more interesting. I mean, the last time we saw Dr. Nefario, he was frozen in carbonite. So it seems like if they were going to bring him back in a big way, it would be cool to show a descendant of his family. But Maxime Dumal doesn't really have many other similar features to Nefario, even in Nefario's younger days. But when I was looking for younger versions of Nefario and combing through the rise of Gru, that was when I realized that if Maxime Lamal was going to be related to anyone, he has the most similarities to Wild Knuckles. I mean, they both have the long nose, the pointy chin, the big ears. The physical similarities are uncanny. And I mean, we never actually learned what Wild Knuckles' real name is. Maybe his true given birth name was Lamal. I think there's some flexibility with the timeline and the identity of Wild Knuckles that could be really interesting to see played out. And I think it would be really interesting to connect Despicable Me 4 to the prequel spin-off series that is the Minions and the Rise of Gru. The story possibilities, I think, could be extremely compelling as well. Now, personally, what I think would be the most interesting story to tell would be to show what Wild Knuckles' descendants thought of Gru becoming good. Maybe through Lamal we'll get to see what a son or grandson of Wild Knuckles would think of Gru turning against Wild Knuckles' teachings. I mean, Wild Knuckles had founded the Vicious Six, was a dominant supervillain, and was still operating at high levels even in his older age. I mean, he completely faked his own death and he showed Gru the path to become a supervillain, which inevitably allowed him to steal the moon. I think it would be devastating for Wild Knuckles' family to see his greatest protege turn good. But regardless of Maxime Lamal's true motivations for taking revenge against Gru, the truth was that Gru's family was not safe. So they are going to be forced to go to an AVL safe house and attempt to appear to be some kind of normal family. I don't exactly know how the issue with Maxime Lamal will get resolved with them on the run though. Are other anti-villain league agents going after Maxime while Gru and Lucy and the kids are all underground? I'm not exactly sure, but you can never contain Gru forever. And we're shown that he will go on a heist with some minions, Gru Jr., and a new girl. Now this new girl in Despicable Me 4 is named Poppy. She apparently likes cats, dance machines, and it seems like she has the aspirations to be a supervillain herself. I mean, I just have this feeling that Gru isn't the one who feels motivated to go on a heist against Principal Ubleschlecht. I don't think Gru would just volunteer to go get mauled by a honey badger, but maybe if a big fan of Gru noticed him while trying to be hidden underground, maybe he would be forced to go on a heist to try to keep a a girl, I don't know, like Poppy Quiet. But I think what's really impressive is that Gru Jr. handles himself greatly. He is a natural born little villain. I think it'll take some time to keep him on the narrow path, but hopefully Gru and Lucy will be up for the task. There's just a lot of moving parts that Gru is going to have to handle in Despicable Me 4. He has a new baby boy. He seems to have a new sidekick. There's a new supervillain hunting him and his family down. And of course, 
the minions are back. I think there's gonna be a lot of crazy, wild, hilarious, evil hijinks for us to see on July 3rd when Despicable Me 4 releases. But now I wanna turn the conversation over to you. Are you excited for the next Despicable Me movie? Let me know down in the comments along with any other ideas you have for future videos and make sure to subscribe to see all of my upcoming Despicable Me videos as well. Finally, I'm Isaac Carlson. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a magical day.